Hey there everyone, Juan Romero here from Switchwatch with my review of Project Warlock. If you want to go back to the 90s where a certain Doom had made an appearance, then this is the game you're certainly going to like the sound of. But is it worth your hard earned cash or is it a cash in based on your nostalgic feelings? Let's jump in and find out. Make no mistake, this is a 90s FPS shooter, but with all the modern improvements you would expect in this day and age. There's no story other than you're a warlock and you have to take down the evil monsters. You're basically thrown in and there's not even a tutorial except for a few handy tips in between load screens. You get to choose casual mode with unlimited continues or you can choose to have free lives on one of the harder modes but once those lives run out you're finished and you're done. So I chose casual to begin with and I'm glad I did because this game can be balls hard at times and it does not apologize for that. So that's a good start. Team who made this assume you have a bit of experience with FPS shooters like this and if you don't get your swimsuit ready as you're going to be chucked in the deep end then you need to learn how to swim quickly before you drown. The first thing you do notice though is how smooth and fast this game runs. It makes for a quick gameplay feel responsive to your inputs however there is one failing and something which needs improvement when you pick up weapons and you need to manage a wheel where your weapons are chosen each segment of that has at least one weapon and sometimes two in which you can toggle in between the game such as a knife or an axe or a staff and a pistol which works fine until you want to swap to something else on that wheel. The wheel is quite cumbersome and requires a very precise input and because of that it can often lead to deaths which is not cool especially if you're playing on the mode where you've only got three lives. But that's the only real gripe I had here. Weapons that you pick up range from the favourite shotgun, great for taking out multiple enemies, a pistol, machine gun, bombs, a staff, which you can either tap to let out a little magical burst or charge for a laser beam capable of killing many enemies in a row. Weapons in the staff can be upgraded in between levels. I say in between levels, but as each zone has between one and four levels, you may need to wait up to four levels before being able to visit the workshop to upgrade. Not only do you have stat points for your character to upgrade your warlock, but you can also spend points you collect through the levels on weapon upgrades as well as purchasing differing spells such as Ice Blast, Storm Rage or Bomberman to name a few, each having varying effectiveness dependent on situations and the monsters that you're up against. I really liked how I had to use differing weapons quite a lot throughout the levels dependent on the situation, although there would be times where I emptied all of my ammo into a room full of enemies. Luckily, ammo, mana and health pots are plentiful throughout the levels. As you progress through the multiple levels and mazes, the game keeps things simple in that you usually have to collect a number of keys or push a number of switches to then find other doors to keep your progress going. While killing differing types of enemies from warlocks, knights, spiders, she-devils, yetis and all sorts of things, the she-devils got on my nerves early on spitting fireballs at me which annoyed the hell out of me and I like nothing more than blowing them to pieces. But each world has its own set of enemy types which I thought was great seeing as a small team worked on this. The money from the Kickstarter was definitely put to good use. At the end of each world, of course, you need to defeat the boss and these battles are very fun indeed. Although challenging, you can often be taken out in just a couple of hits if you're not careful. There are five worlds and each world has zones with levels ranging from one to four levels or so each and while one could say it can become a tad repetitive I never got tired of blasting monsters to crap. The designer had a dream of making this video game for a long time based on how his father got him into games when he was young. He knew exactly how it should feel to blow the hell out of monsters and he has that feel down to a T. It really does feel spot on. It's brutal, bloody and just how I imagine it would be revisiting my childhood favourite shooters. I want to really commend the team that worked on the audio here. The music tracks are great for keeping the game feel fast paced. And one of the things I was talking about is the feel of the game. And that's really important when it comes to sound design. And thank goodness the weapons sound beefy, especially when firing them. And that shotgun sounds absolutely great. I have nothing negative to say as I enjoyed it very much indeed. 
it was brilliant all the way through. Visually, well, the visuals have been deliberately designed to look the way they do. Of course, it may not meet a modern gamer's taste, but that's the point, to take us back to the old school. Some of the environments are partly destructible, enemies look well designed, and the bosses look very cool indeed. Levels and worlds, they all look very nicely different from each other, taking you through sewers, medieval castles, through an ice world, all sorts here, which is really nice. Lots of blood soaks the floor when enemies are taken out and get splatted, so if you're squeamish, maybe stay clear of this game. Not only that, but there are also options to change the color palettes, post-processing, bloom and motion blur options to keep those that like to tinker happy. Those looking for gyro controls are sadly going to be disappointed as it's not in the game as yet. However, the game's performance in both docked and handheld runs very smoothly indeed and I couldn't find any hiccups going on, which is great news. Value-wise, Project Warlock is priced at $14.99 and here in the UK, well, $12.99. I think it's well priced, but it drops in a week where we have one of the biggest sales on the Nintendo eShop. So I hope people don't ignore this shooter as it really is a blast to play. Over 60 levels and one of those games that even once the campaign is over, it's worth playing again. There isn't, unfortunately, any multiplayer options at this moment in time. There is, of course, lots of difficulty options to keep those hardcore players happy. In terms of my verdict, I didn't know I was looking for an old school FPS shooter, but when I played it, I was glad I gave it a try because it was genuinely a great surprise. A game I enjoyed thoroughly from start to finish, hits all the right notes for me and does not cost the earth to own. If you're looking for a nice old school FPS shooter, then you really can't go wrong here. A solid 8 out of 10 from me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of our subscribers, watchers, and members. We really do appreciate your time. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification. If you like this type of content, we do reviews. Check out all the bargains on the Nintendo eShop on a weekly basis and let you know all the physical games and upcoming games that are dropping on the Nintendo Switch every weekend so make sure you tune in for those as well as we give away quite a few things here and there so we'd love to see you again if this is your first time here i'll put some videos up above now so you can check out some other content my name is juan romero from switch watch i'll see you again very soon take care